This is tutorial 2 and we're going to pick up from where we left off in tutorial 1. Uh, basically we're going to create a mesh. So click on 3D on the side there, then we're going to select Tetra Mesh. You can use a different type of mesh but for this we're just going to use Tetra. Um, click Volume Tetra and in the Enclosed Volume section here uh, make sure Solids is selected from the drop down menu. We need to ensure that the elements in the non-design and design space are put into their right place. Uh, we do that by clicking, um, making sure it says elements to surface and solid component. That way the, these elements will end up in the right component, design or non-design. Once we've done that, we'll click on solids and select displayed and that selects everything that's on the screen and we'll type in a reasonable element size for this we'll use 200 millimeters uh, that's just because the height here is I've made it 200 millimeters on purpose and uh, width of 800 so the elements will fit in there nicely obviously we can use different elements like quad elements and they probably would work very well in this because it's a rectangular shape but just for the simplicity of applying this to anything we're going to just use the tetra mesh elements when you're happy with the selection you just push mesh um, and the other mesh elements are located here so you can use anything you think will be the best um, best to apply for the purpose of this, we're just going to keep it simple and just use Tetra Mesh elements and then keep moving, keep moving on. Um, so you can check out the mesh, have a look, so you can see it fits in nicely there. If you're not happy with it, you can click Reject, otherwise push Return, and you can keep moving on. So the model's now meshed. We want to right-click on the side menu and select Create and Load Collector. Type in an appropriate name for this going to put on some forces so this will call loads. Uh, select a color, we'll go red, ensure that card image is set to none, uh, then push create. And we'll do the same thing again, right click, create load collector, type in uh, SPC, stands for single point constraint, you can name it whatever you want. Um, you could call it boundary conditions if you want, but technically the force is the boundary conditions as well. So we'll just call this SPC. Select a good color. We'll go with blue and click create. So then you can expand the menu by going right click and expand all. It means you can see everything you've created. You can see SPC and loads there. Uh, and so, so now what we want to do is just hide the design space by clicking those icons. This makes it easier for us to apply some boundary conditions to the non-design space here. So make sure the SPC load collector is current. You won't have anything on here that says make current because it is the current selection. If you have a look on the loads one you can see it says make current there but we don't we don't want that. We just want SPC so it's the current selection because it's bold. So now click Analysis and Constraints. Select a node on the appropriate face. So we're going to do the um, support here. We'll click on the bottom. Just move it. It's moved into the right place there. Click on the bottom face, and then we want to go um, click the nodes button there and select by face. And this selects all the nodes on that face. We'll make sure all the degrees of freedom are locked and push create. That will add on um, the single point constraint. You can change the size by adjusting this to make the blue um, triangles there that represent the SPC, uh, SPC bigger or smaller. It's just a visualization thing. It doesn't actually affect how well or it performs or anything, it's just, just so you can see it clearly. So now we'll add 
the uh, oops selected the wrong wrong face so you got to be careful with that and if you do select the wrong face you can just click reject um, and uh, yes no no harm done so I'm just pushing return now so that that one's locked in in case I muck it up again so now I'll add the, the constraints to the bottom of this non-design space you select it on the bottom face so that's all good click create oops forgot to push by face so selected that node so you can just push reject at any time and go back when you need to so it's quite handy uh, if you do make a mistake it's not the end of the world create and now you can see we've got the support structure there the support, sorry the support constraints so next thing we want to do is add a load to the structure So we need to make current the loads, uh, load collector. Then we go analysis and forces. Uh, we'll click a, we we'll need to rotate this structure around a bit so we can see the top. We're going to put a distributed load across the, all the nodes on the top of this structure. All right, so select the node on the top surface and by face again now we want to give the force and magnitude so under global system there I select constant components and we'll enter the surface it's going to be uh, in the z direction negative because it's going down on top of the top support so negative 200 newtons will do it's not really too important for this exercise this is more um, to give an idea of just the overview of how it works. Uh, so negative 200 newtons on the top surface. Uh, so I've put it on the wrong spot there. Whoops, put it in the Z direction. Here we go, create. And when you're happy with the loads on there, you click return and we'll go and unhide the design space. So now you can see the full model. And it's got the loads on the top and the boundary, the constraints on the bottom.